the basic message, it's a very modest one. I'm not sure that I know a lot. No, I'm sure that I don't know a lot of architecture. It's nonetheless what interests me in architecture. It's how architecture is for me the exemplary case of how, of how ideology is at work precisely where you don't think you will find it. Even in, 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 in buildings, or not only buildings in the larger sense, houses, but even house appliances and so on, where you think we have just pure functional objects, that even the most ordinary everyday objects can be objects not only to use them, but to think with them. First, I want to repeat, I'm sorry some of you already know it, but it's my big royal example to make this point. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. It always interested me the paradox of, I already mentioned them, obviously I have some anal fixation here, I don't want to go into it, toilets. Did you notice if you traveled around the world how different they are? I simplify to the Atmos, but this doesn't invalidate the analysis. I think if you go, I don't know how it's here, I just will mention three big civilizations, nations. In France, the whole of the toilet bowl is in the back, so that when you produce excrement, they quickly disappear in the hole. The German toilets, the old type, now they are disappearing, but you still find them, it's the opposite. The hole is in front, so that when you produce excrement, they are, they are displayed in the bag, they don't disappear in water, this is the German ritual, you know, you should every morning sniff, inspect your sheets for traces of illness, it's high hermeneutic. I think the original meaning of hermeneutic for German is maybe this. Then uh, in Anglo-Saxon world, United States, you get, you know, the toilet bowl which is full of water so that uh, sheet floats in it before it disappears. And then I asked many of my friends, architects, interior designers, why these differences? I, they, they gave me two books on the structure of toilets. Nowhere did I get an explanation. And then a wild speculation came to my mind. Do you know that from the late 18th century, uh, we have in Europe the idea of European Trinity. It's a racist idea, you are not in it, uh, Italy is not in it, but the idea is that the three crucial European nations are France, Germany, England. Each of them standing for a certain level of social life and for a certain politics. France is politics, is the privileged domain, and politically left revolution. England, middle of the road, liberal, moderate and economy, Germany, metaphysics and poetry, and conservative. And my God, it did strike me, isn't this the key? In France, revolutionary approach. She, whole, sheet, hole for the sheet in the back, it should quickly be liquidated, like a kind of a guillotine. Uh, Anglo-Saxon, pragmatic, let it float, let's be rational. <laughs> German, metaphysics and poetry. You observe it, you think, and so on. Okay, this may be madness, but you see what's my point? It's that something like this had to be at work to account even for such a common thing like the structure of toilets. 